Amen. Thank you, Meredith. You know, we sing uh, tonight, He's coming soon, He's coming soon. Uh, we sing about the sweet by and by. So I guess the Lord wants us to think about that tonight. Amen. So if you would, please take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22. We, uh, we were actually there last week and went through the first uh, five verses. So we'll look at a couple more tonight. I actually was uh, looking at doing something else, but... Um, as I was reading this again, uh, felt like the Lord was saying, nah, we'll just, we'll just stick with this. So, and I know Brother Rich is going to be getting to it, but it'll be months before we, he gets there. So uh, the Lord will probably come back before Brother Rich gets to Revelation chapter 22. Amen. All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just... Uh, <clears throat> We'll start in verse 1 again, if you would, please. Uh, I won't be long in our Bible study. We might have some time for prayer requests uh, after this. Um, but just there's a reminder. We'll just read it. I'm not going to um, go over that again. But in verse 1, it says, And he showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for, for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall uh, be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no, uh, they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These are faithful and true. These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord thy God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard them, heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And he saith unto me, See thou do it not, for I... And thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And verse 11 says, And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Father, we ask that uh, you would just help us today to, or this evening, to put the things of the day aside or that we could see them in your light and um, in your hand. Uh, God, please help us to uh, give you our minds and our hearts this evening in our Bible study. Lord, we're grateful that we can be in church with your people, and we pray that you be with the club workers and, 
And uh, God, that it would just be an investment for eternity for Protects About This Church. And again, we're grateful. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so as we think about this, you know, you, th- you ever think about uh, going somewhere, somewhere uh, maybe that you haven't been before, and you plan for the trip, and you make ready, and, and uh, you know, you're packing, and well, years ago, not too many years ago, but we used to have something called MAPS. You guys have no idea what we're talking about. And uh, maps and traveling were the number one cause for divorce. Um, it just got ugly. And, um, but uh, we, you know, you, 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 we used to get these things called triptychs from AAA. And uh, it was a... Uh, it was a book, and it had the whole trip laid out. It had the roads, and, and then it had stops along the way. And, and um, you know, we, we, we enjoyed them. Um, but a GPS is better, I'm telling you. So GPS is better. Um, but, you know, you plan the trip. You maybe get the hotel, or if you're staying with somebody, and you got to bring all the stuff. And... and um, you know, then what you're going to do when you get there and, you know, the first day and second day and you got it all planned out. And you think about it and you get excited about it. And you got to got to take off work and and, you know, get caught up before you leave or, you know, you know, just planning on the trip. Well, hey, listen, we're getting ready to take a trip and uh, it'd be good if we at least think about it. Amen. Uh, because it is coming. It's for sure thing. It's not going to get canceled. Um, you know, it's going, it's not going to get canceled. So don't worry about that. Um, that is disappointing when you're planning to go somewhere and it gets canceled, isn't it? And, um, but Hey, listen, this trip is not going to get canceled and it's going to be great. Um, so, uh, we left off, uh, I think last week at verse five. And, uh, I think as we look at this, the next few verses, the theme here is, you know, the time is here, and don't seal the book. The time is near, don't seal the book. Um, look at verse 6, and we'll just kind of go through the verses. Um, and this is a great promise, a great assurance that these words are faithful and true. Good to see Miss Hatcher and Brother Hatcher together. I mean, not that you're not together on stuff, but... It seems like, yeah, just have it appeared in public together. And this is a great thing. It's a great day. Um, good to see you guys. Amen. Um, huh? Uh, okay. Well, we'll know where to look then. Amen. So, so these words are faithful and true, just like Brother Hatcher's words, you know, just, um, what do you think of when you think of faithful? What's faithful mean? Just without looking it up, just read your Bible and you read, these words are faithful. Brother Chris? Consistent. Consistent. Mr. Bromley? Constant, okay. Um, anybody else? Right. Um, it's going to happen. It's, you know, uh, I was um, looking at something, and it was about Old Faithful, and I, and I said, how long has that been, thing been going on, that Old Faithful, out in um, Jellystone Park or Yellowstone Park? or <laughs> Where is it? Okay, all right, I must be thinking of Yogi Bear. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, Old Faithful, and, and uh, I don't know if I ever found out the answer. It's just been going for a long time, but it's just faithful. It's going to happen, and, and uh, well, God's more faithful than Old Faithful. Um, he's faithful. So these words are faithful, and they're true. They're true. Um, 
They're just absolutely true and it's going to happen so you can count on it. You can, you can uh, plan on it. You can make plans and they're not going to get canceled and you're not going to be disappointed because these words are faithful and true in verse 6. He says this, he says, um, uh, these sayings are faithful and true and the Lord, uh, the Lord God of, thy, of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servant these things which must shortly be done. In other words, um, it's not going to be long. You say, well, that was written 2,000 years ago. Um, you know, you think of in the realm of things, in the scheme of things, um, it's not long. And whenever you read it, and whenever man has read this, he doesn't have a lot of time. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to be in the presence of the Lord in a few years at best. Even you guys, I mean, uh, you, th you think, well, I got another 50, 60 years to live. That goes by pretty quick, some say. Um, it goes by pretty quick. So, um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen soon. And, and I kind of feel like it's actually going to happen soon. It just, it just, anyway. Um, I just think the Lord's coming back soon. And, um, but he's going to come back for sure. Verse 7, this is the Lord saying this. Uh, verse 7, behold, I come quickly. He's coming soon and he's coming fast. And, um, and it's just not going to be long. And it's going to, here's the thing, and we'll see this in, in a few minutes as we go toward the end. Um, he said, don't seal the book. Don't seal the book. The time's at hand. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be done shortly. Um, so we have some time to prepare for the trip. And we don't know how much time we have, but we have some time. So, you know, if I was going to go on a, on a big, exciting trip and, and they're supposed to come by and get me, uh, you know, within the, the next couple months, just be ready because we're not sure when we can make it. But when we get there, you better be ready. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be wise to get ready earlier you know, every day that goes by is a day closer you are. And I think if Christians ever thought of getting ready, we ought to think about that now. It's like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we ought to prepare for this. But anyway, he says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So he has said that from the beginning. You'll be blessed if you keep his word. If you keep, if you keep it in mind, if you, keep, if you take heed to this book, the Bible says you'll be blessed, okay? Um, now, look at this. I love the, the last part here. He said, now listen, worship God. We can get distracted and get involved in a lot of things. Even John, now you think about this. Even John, here, faithful John, uh, here, God's, God's revealing his word to him. He's giving him insight on the future, and John gets distracted in his worship. So if it can happen to John, it can happen to us, right? Uh, you can get distracted in church, you can get distracted at work, you can get distracted in your devotions, you can get distracted. We can all get distracted from what truly, the one that truly should be worshipped. But look, at, look what happens here. In verse 8, it says, it says, I, John, saw these things, amazing things, things that we've never seen, things that no one has ever seen. 
I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and, see, and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. And that's when he blew it. All right? Now, I don't think John was a, a, a bad guy. But he made a mistake. Right? He got distracted. He started worshiping the wrong thing. And um, how often does God talk about idolatry? Now, I was thinking about this verse. And, um, you know, normally when you, when you think of idolatry, okay, you start off with the idol in the house. You ever go in somebody's house and they got a little shrine somewhere of something and, and a statue or some candles, and you think, man, why would you do that? And, you know, that, you think that's on purpose. Uh, but idolatry, idolatry can slip in really quick. And you just start worshiping somebody else or something else. And you just, uh, even a Christian, toward other Christian, uh, you, could, you could start worshiping a, uh, let's say, uh, a method or a way or uh, you've heard, the, you know, the same way. We ain't never done it like that before, you know. Uh, we just got to be careful. That he stays the main thing. Why would somebody, why would uh, a couple Christians in church fight about something in church? You know the Lord's not in that. Right. You know, you've heard people uh, fight about color of carpet. That's why we, you know, Brother Tim asked me about the carpet. He said, Pastor, are we ever going to, we ever thought about fixing the rips in the carpet? And I said, I have. But you know, if we got new carpet, it's an opportunity for Christians to fight about the color. So we're not doing it. I'm lying. I didn't say that. But, uh, um, you know, but, but people can fight over um, the weirdest stuff. You know, where something's at or, I mean, just weird things that don't even matter. Uh, to God, anyway. But uh, he says, listen, uh, verse 9, he saith unto me, see thou, um, he saith unto me, see thou, do it not, as far as worshiping uh, the angel. Don't, don't worship the angel, uh, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of the book, worship God. That, you just have to think about that for a while. Just that John, on the Isle of Patmos, I mean, spared from, a, a, you know, boiling oil and all that, and faithful John, he's an old man. He's probably about 90-something, okay? If I, mom was here, I wouldn't say that. Okay, so he's old, I mean, you know, he's on his last days. He's served the Lord, been faithful all his life. Oh, mom's probably watching. Sorry, mom. Okay. And uh, faithful, serving the Lord all his life. And he worships an angel or messenger, whoever this guy is. Because he said, I'm of one of the prophets. I don't know. But anyway, Brother Richard cleared all that up. <clears throat> But, but this guy, he should know better. I mean, remember when they uh, tried to worship Paul? And, he, you know, he said, get up. You know, don't worship me. So they knew better. And they knew they weren't supposed to do this. And believe me, if this could happen to John here, then it could absolutely happen to us. And so we must, must be careful. Worship God. Worship God. You know, think about on oh, the last chapter of the last book, the exhortation, the command, the warning, worship God. Why? Because the time's at hand. The time is at hand. 
What are, you, what, are you, what are you involved in? What are you caught up in today? The time is at hand. He's coming quickly. Um, worship God. Worship God, verse 9. Verse 10, it says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So he says, The things which must shortly be done, uh, he's coming quickly. Then again in verse 10, the time is at hand. The time is at hand. It's right here. It's ready to happen. Uh, now, look what he says here in verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. I used to read that and thought, well, why does God want him to stay unjust? He uh, which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Why would God want him to be filthy? He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. So God's not saying, that's what I want you to be. He is saying that it's going to happen shortly. I'm giving you notice. Uh, I want you to be aware. Uh, warning, if you will. It's going to happen shortly. It must shortly be done. Uh, he's coming quickly. Uh, the time is at hand. In other words, he's coming, and whatever you are when he comes... You have time to prepare. And whatever you are when he comes, that's what you are. And that's what you'll be, that's what you're going to stand before the Lord with. If you're filthy, you're going to stand before the Lord with that. If you're unjust, you're going to stand before the Lord with that. If you're, uh, if you're holy, and then that's what you'll go to heaven with. If you're um, righteous, then that's what you'll go to heaven with. In other words, you choose. Like, like we said the other day, you choose. It's not a surprise. It's, God is letting us choose what we want to go to heaven with and what we want to be before the Lord. Isn't that good? But he says, listen, um, you know, sometimes you might say, well, how much longer can this stuff go on? And It won't be long. And again, things can change in a moment, really. And uh, we just look to the Lord. The promises of God are the same. And, and uh, we have all eternity to look forward to and to work toward right now. Amen? So, all right. Uh, Brother Rich, if you want to come, and we'll take some, uh, uh, maybe a praise, if you have a praise, and a Prayer request, if you have a prayer request. Uh, Jenny Jackson sent me a, a, like, four or five. I didn't bring them in. Um, things that she was been praying for since when she was here on a Wednesday night. And I, I think I was not here because some of them, I don't, I don't even recognize them. Um, so anyway, I'll um, I have Brother Rich announce that or something. And... And because uh, I don't know the answer to that, but I appreciate her praying for prayer requests that she, not Jenny Jackson. Jenny McCall. Jenny McCall, okay. And um, she's always going to be Jenny Jack. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, uh, Brother Rich is going to go ahead and do that now. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll start, we'll start with the prayer requests and we'll start on this side. And then we'll do uh, praises afterwards. All right, something on your heart that Lord is... Yes, Ms. Cooper? Okay. Brian Miller? Okay, so Mrs. Cooper has a co-worker named Brian Miller who just has a medical mystery, something that's just... They just can't pinpoint and cure. So, okay. 
Okay, so if you would pray for him. Amen. All right, anybody else on this side? All right, Miss B. Mrs. Bartron has a very large personal unspoken. Okay. All right, Brother, Brother Al? Sir? Okay, Al Cooper has two unspoken. Remember, pray for those because usually a lot of times those are pretty big when, you know. All right, anybody else on this side? All right, anybody on this side? Hey, we're going to work away from the front to the back. All right, Brother Steenrod? Yeah, Brother Black just lost his brother, so. Yes. And his granddaughter, Jolene. Okay. So if you didn't hear that, he has quite a bit. Just for his two daughters, uh, or his daughter Amy and his granddaughter Jolene and their health. And then Mrs. Steenrod is having surgery coming up. So let's pray for yeah, her. Yeah, can I repeat them because there's people online? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Mrs. Jackson? Okay, so the, the Brendenbergs are, are traveling tomorrow, uh, Joe, Becky, and all the kids, and their mom, his mom, and they're flying uh, uh, to New York and to Florida. So just pray for them, and everything in the airport goes well. And uh, pray for the airport. <laughs> pray for the airport. Amen. Amen. That's a crew right there. That's the crew. Amen. All right. So pray for them as they travel for tra travel mercies. Amen. Mrs. Connor. All right. Okay. So pray for Mallory Connor. She's uh, looking for a new job. Just pray that God will give her direction in that. Amen. All right. Our brother Mike. So, well, she's, not great, but she's, great with she's great with John, right? Why are we laughing at that? Right? <laughs> so pray for his very pregnant daughter, Joanna. Okay. Okay. So just pray for uh, Brother Mike Kowanowski's daughter, Joanna. She's pregnant, very great with child. She has a month to go. And just pray for everything to go well with the baby and her health. Amen. All right. Middle section, start front. Fellas, the silent chosen, the frozen chosen. How you guys doing? All right. All right. Anybody else? Brother um, J Jason. Yeah. Brother Weigel. Three very large unspoken. So Brother Weigel has three very large unspoken prayer requests. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Miss Becky. At the fair, which is the whole county of St. Mary's County. All right. All right, so pray for her stepson, Brian, and he has COVID. All right. Anybody else in the middle section? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, yes, ma'am. What is your first name again? I'm so sorry. Andrea. Andrea. I hate when I have to do that, but it does help if I... Okay, Andrea. Yes, ma'am. One large, unspoken. So Andrea has one large, unspoken. Okay, yes, ma'am. And then Miss Nicole. What do you have? All right. So pray for Nicole. She has a big nursing exam, GNA state exam, Friday morning. Amen. All right. Good. Um, Yes, Chris. Okay, Chris has one unspoken. And then Mrs. Bromley. Uh, 
Okay, so Harold Bromley. So pray for Harold Bromley coming back, uh, traveling, and then Chris had one unspoken. All right, amen. Okay, wait. Ah, oh, come on now. We have rules. Mrs. B, I'm just kidding. Mrs. Bartron? Is that what the prayer request is? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so her request is, okay, so just pray for her. So for her 50th birthday, her, her daughters, her, no, this is awesome. Her daughters are flying her to Colorado so she can see her great-great-grandbaby, and then she's flying back to Tennessee, uh, and then she'll be there for a little while. So pray for her. Pray for the traveling, that she gets to see her little great-great-grandbaby, and that she has a great 50th birthday. Amen. Okay, so you... And she has to fly back by herself, so pray for her on that. Amen. All right. Yes, ma'am. Brother Al? Um, Bob Green mentioned it on Sunday, but his mother had a heart attack. Who? who? Bob Green. Bob Green's mom. Oh. Bob Green in our church, uh, his mom had a heart attack. Okay, so pray for Bob's mom. She had a heart attack. I did not know that. Yes, Ms. Cooper? Okay, so Bob Green's wife also, pray for Mrs. Green's health. All right. Jason? Um, okay, so pray for, this is Miss bon, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Campbell, her son Stephen. Son-in-law, okay, Stephen, her son-in-law. Right, was in a work explosion and his leg is really messed up, so just... And he can't see. Okay. What's that? Okay. Okay, amen. So, but just continue to pray for his health. All right. All right, Mrs. Hatcher. Right. Okay, so Cecilia Schumann, um, related to them, uh, she, she's about 90, she has COVID and she's in the hospital and she can't have any visitors. So, so just pray for her on that and that is tough. So amen. All right, Mrs. Jackson. She does or doesn't? Okay, so Mrs. Jackson's sister, Marilyn, took a fall a while back, and three years ago, and so they're still testing her, and they think she has bleeding on her brain, so pray for her on that. Okay, yes, ma'am. All right, yes, ma'am. Brother Lewis. How old was he? Oh. Um, so Brother Lewis's uh, manager, one of his managers, uh, Melissa, her 29-year-old son uh, just recently passed away today. Today. Uh, and he says that they both are saved, though, or he was saved, so they have that comfort. So just pray for that family. That's Melissa. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. If you, have another, if you have a prayer request and we miss you, it's okay. Anybody else? All right.
Okay, Pastor, do you have anything? Okay, uh, also the Bean family. Um, that's the family that just lost a little three-year-old. Um, just pray for them. There, there, there's a lot there. They're you know, just losing a three-year-old. So pray for the Bean family, if you would. And then Brother Rich has one really large unspoken. If you could pray for me on that one, that would be great. All right, let's do praises. Um, just something big the Lord, or something the Lord has put on your heart. We'll start on this side. We have a praise. All right, Brother Steenrod. Okay. Amen. Good. So a Amy, his daughter's car in her accident was taken out pretty bad, but they were able to find a car today. So praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Miss Lori. Sure. Amen. So for those of you that didn't hear Miss Lori, um, just spending time with the at the at High Point with the Canoyers, the Schmidleys, and just the Canoyers are, are the Canoyers are doing well, you know, for losing their dad and all. Um, but they're they're doing good. So it, it was just a blessing to be able to be there. Amen. All right. Is that correct? Did I okay, amen. All right. Anybody in the middle section with a praise? All right, Hunter. Yes, he did. Hunter Hyatt. Well, that's a praise and a prayer request. Yeah. Pray for St. Mary's County. Pray for the airport. <laughs> so I looked at his, his license. This boy is six foot four and 130 pounds. My leg is 130 pounds. <laughs> wow. Amen. You're probably going to hit around six foot. Wow. I'm glad I don't feed you, man. <laughs> so, um, so he got his driver's license. Amen. With that, though, with that praise comes great responsibility. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. But I think he'll be all right. He's a pretty good kid. All right. Anybody else in the middle with praise? Jason. Yes. Praise God for his goodness, his grace, and his long-suffering. Amen. Anybody else in the middle? All right. Uh, well, Chris, we'll start with Chris. I was able to get a job. You were able to get a job. Yeah. Amen. Chris got a job. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Miss Leslie. Um, anyway, my niece, Lynn, she was Yeah, she shared it with us. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Share the, share the praise part of it. It's okay. Stop yelling at your mom. <laughs> go ahead, Miss Leslie. So she called you last night. Yes, ma'am. No, no, go ahead. She called you last night. So, so... She had a she had a stint put in her. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay, brother Dan, did you have did you have one? Yes, I think it was like three, yes.
Amen. Amen. And how is she she now? Oh, so she's good. Amen. Okay. So, but still pray for her, though, because she has to heal from this. So, okay. Amen. Amen. No, no, no. You, you, you weren't here for the prayer request part, but we didn't know the praise part of it. So that's, that's perfectly fine. Yes, ma'am. Miss Leslie, you know we love you with all our hearts. We do. No, it is not. <laughs> No, it is. When you're not here with us, your presence is missed. So, so amen. Amen. I'm just trying to make myself look good, Mrs. Bromley. You are in trouble. So, <laughs> amen. No, we do, we do love you, Miss Leslie. All right, anybody else with a praise in the middle? All right? All right? All right, Miss, um, I didn't forget who everybody is now. Yes, ma'am, Miss Robles? Who is your grandfather? Yeah, oh, amen. Amen. So, amen. Continue to pray for them, though. All right. Well, I'll come back to this side in one one minute. Let me go ahead. Uh, let me. Did I already start on this side? Okay. So let me let me go ahead and do this side, and we'll go back to the side. Okay. Anybody? Okay, Cassidy. That's good. Cassidy had a big unspoken answer. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right, anybody else on this side with a praise? All right, back to the side. All right, uh, Brother Jackson. Amen. Yeah, I remember that. He was in the hospital cracking jokes. Bad jokes, but cracking them. So, no, I'm just kidding. Brother, yes, sir, Brother Steenrun. Yes, Brother Roy Burtis, God has bought his house. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Amen. All right. Brother Dan. So you, he just said... Is a broken blood vessel. Well, see, the other day they came up to church, and, and Miss Leslie gets out of the car. She's walking, and Dan's sitting in the car with a bloody nose. I don't know. It looks just kind of suspect to me. So, so, amen. <laughs> well, just, just pray, though, they find out what's the matter with it. So, yes, sir. All right. Okay. So just pray for him because he gets bad, he gets bloody noses. So, all right. Well, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Anybody else? Did I miss one? Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Father God, we do love you, Lord. And um, God, we. We have a very unique church, God. We have a great church. We have a church, God, of folks uh, just with so many different prayer requests, God. And we have uh, 
just, God, we have unspokens and, and we have health issues, God, and um, we just have folks that need to be saved, God. Uh, there's so many requests tonight, God, I can't go through each one of them, Lord, but God, I just pray for the, the need of every request mentioned tonight, God, every, every prayer request, God, everything, Lord, every unspoken, and God, again, I, I just love my church. I thank you for it, God. I thank you for our folks, and uh, they're a great, a great uh, group of folks, God, who love you, and God, thank you for just your mercy, God, for every praise, God, that you answered. I thank you, God, for for everything, Lord, and just a special prayer, God, and I just think about uh, j just this, God, just the, the little little Brendenburg, God, in the airport with her mom and dad and just two flights, and I, I, I know Mrs. Jackson has mentioned that a couple times, but she's concerned about that, and I do pray for their safety, God, and I just pray for all the other requests mentioned tonight, God, and I love you. I thank you, God, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, we're a little, little bit early, so I'm not sure what time they'll be done in the back. So just kind of, I guess they'll give the message, and then we'll go from there. So amen. All right. Well. Lord.